What is going on champion squad? It is your voice only welcome faces back to another Apex Legends video. Today I'll be showing you guys how to get better with five in-game decision making tips. Thank you for joining me and let's get into the video. Decision making is crucial when going up against higher skilled players. Even the smallest choices can keep you alive. So today I'll be going over five tips to help you get better by improving your decision making. So be sure to stick around. If you're new here, subscribe and join the champion squad here. You'll find some of the best Apex tips to make you an even better player. Now let's get into some crucial decision making tips. All right, legends, let's get straight into the first tip I have, which is knowing when to bail gunfights. No one can make a perfect play all the time, and even the best players can slip up. Now, knowing when to bail gunfights is all about evaluating the situation and having confidence in trusting your abilities. Also, to make sure everyone is on the same page, when I refer to bailing a gunfight, I mean that you fall back and give yourself enough room for you to get a heal off. A crucial moment to bail a gunfight is when you start to get third party. Get yourself off the scene and let the other two teams fight. After a few shots have been exchanged by both teams, most players in that area are need to heal and are not playing as aggressive. That's when you can come back to the gunfight with full health ready to clean up. Another good time to build a gunfight is when you get your shields cracked with two or more enemies around you. At that point, it's a numbers game and most likely they'll take you out if they have two eyes and two thumbs. But if you fall back and heal with some cover, you have a better chance to single out and knock an enemy off guard. And lastly, another great time to bail and reposition if an opponent has much better positioning than you. You don't have to force yourself to take that gunfight angle. Falling back and trying to regain leverage and better positioning is the best way to take that approach, especially if you're by yourself. Now I have a quick example on bailing a gunfight. Here I come across a Wraith in Capital City. I ended up knocking her because of my better positioning, but I still don't know where her other teammates are. Then I see one of her teammates drop from the top, but they end up taking down one of my teammates. Now it's a possible 1v2 situation. And from the distance, I also hear two other players taking a zipline up to third party our fight. This is when I decide to bail and regain leverage. This also helps my down teammate get to safety since they're all distracted. This is when I let them fight each other out for a bit then I get myself back into the mix. After landing a few shots from afar, I immediately full send to clean up all the kills because I know majority of the players in that area are now extremely weak. Okay, champion squad, now let's get into the second tip I have, which is being unpredictable. I'm sure everyone has heard about this before, but keeping enemies guessing on what your next move is is always the best way to get a jump on an enemy with taking little to no damage. If an enemy can predict where you're coming from, most likely they'll just be pre-aiming you to get the first shots. But if you catch them off guard by taking random, unpredictable routes, you can easily get off the first mag on them. So the first thing to keep in mind is using nades before entering a gunfight. Especially using thermites with how loud they are, they won't be able to hear which angle you arrive to the gunfight at. Another good way on keeping the enemies guessing is by not peeking at the same angle over and over again. By switching up different angles than the opponent, you won't have them ADSing on your exact position. Then they will have to take precious time to readjust their aim while you can be focused on them immediately. And the last thing to note about being unpredictable is always changing up your position after knocking an enemy. I feel where Apex is as it stands right now, many players are focused purely thirsting the first enemy they knock just to get that bonus hunter damage. But this is the main reason you aren't as prepared for the next enemy you take on. The small seconds of taking the time to finish an enemy can ultimately get you cracked or killed from not being ready. So after knocking someone, always look to change your position to keep the enemies clueless on what your next position is. Doing this will let you have the jump on the first mag that you put out and will definitely be a big help if you're trying to solo squads or take a 1v3 gunfight. So again, here I have another quick example on being unpredictable. In this situation, I'm nowhere near my teammate and he is getting surrounded. I attempt to do my best at range, but I know I need to close the distance to do some real damage. So before entering into the fight, notice I spam nade as much as I can so that way they can't hear where I'm coming from. Plus, they'll all be weak. As I close the distance, I get a quick jump on the wraith and quickly single her out. Also notice how I didn't finish her immediately. Rather, I go to change my positioning around the cover. Once near cover, I feel more confident now to thirst my original kill even if I get pushed. Then I notice a bang right to my left that was healing behind the rock from all the nades I threw in from the beginning. I knew she wasn't fully healed unless she had gold body armor, which she didn't, so I fried her for 140 damage. Then as I'm thirsting both of them, the third teammate actually catches me off guard and gets the first shots. Luckily, I'm able to use my movement and strafe to dodge some of Pathfinder's shots while getting a mag off with the R99. Now, I didn't do too much damage, so I needed to take cover to weapon swap and reload my wingman, and then I finish him off. With that said, let's get right into the third tip I have, which is to abuse cover when outnumbered. Using cover can make a huge difference in a gunfight, especially when you're outnumbered. This is because having cover most most of the time creates a one-on-one -on -one gunfight situation. That way you aren't getting team shotted in the open. Having cover can also let you heal without entirely bailing the scene of a gunfight, as long as you are a safe distance away from the enemies so that way you have time to get the heal off. Another important thing to
thing to know is that using cover can also help you send out a few shots without being tagged as long as you're equipped with your shoulder peeking. Swooping in and out of cover will help you become a harder target to hit while keeping your eyes on the enemy. Just make sure you don't fully commit off of cover unless you have the ability and confidence to one mag an enemy. Now having good in-game movement will help with how good you get at using cover. So obviously the more you practice and incorporate abusing cover, the better you'll get at it. Now let's take a look at another example on abusing cover. This was early in a ranked game where I didn't have much heals besides my healing drone. The first gunfight ended up losing majority of my health so I quickly looked to attain the closest cover so I can set my drone. After healing for a little bit, I hear a pathfinder trying to make a play on me. So I sneak up on top of the truck and fry him for 104 before he can get his first shots on me, which is crucial. At that point, he has one shot and I'm able to weapon swap and finish the kill while using the truck as cover from the Gibraltar in the distance. This lets me have a one-on-one -on -one gunfight with pathfinder and I end up cleaning him up. Then I get back on my drone to start healing while still being aware and sending shots at the Gibraltar. At this point, I have almost no ammo and I need to full send on this Gibraltar by closing the distance without taking too many shots. So what I do is I make my way through the building and get high grounds. Once I notice he was trying to go for a res or heal, I drop down and finish him off. All right, legends, now let's get into the fourth tip I have, which is to control the pace of the gunfight. Being in control of the gunfight and taking it to angles that you want will help you dominate more bullet exchanges. Most players get intimidated way too quickly if they come across a team that's playing more aggressive than usual. It's all about relieving the pressure little by little until you get the upper hand. Cracking an enemy's shield will easily relieve pressure from that one enemy. Then you're only focused on two players, which is more manageable if they full send on you. Keeping your distance and winning most bullet exchanges when you get headlessly pushed will easily sway the odds of the gunfight drastically. Never force the gunfights against higher skill players. Moving in and out, winning majority of the bullet exchanges will eventually weaken all the players on the enemy team. Then it's up to your own personal instinct on how confident you're feeling to make a play on them. But one thing to always make sure of is not to be afraid to fall back and regain leverage or cover. Apex Legends is truly a game that is heavily focused on timing and damage exchanges. Controlling the pace of the fight will indeed take some practice, but will for sure help you get better. And finally, guys, moving on to the fifth and final tip I have, which is to always look to improve your positioning. In my last video, I went slightly in depth with how positioning is key to winning more gunfights, but it's important to know that getting the best positioning is always changing mid gunfight and is heavily based on the location of the other enemies. Getting high grounds is the most basic but effective strategy against other players, but there will be plenty of times where you won't be able to achieve high grounds and the fight will be an even playing field. That's when having good in-game movement and being unpredictable with your positioning will also help with dominating the situation. But if I had to explain briefly on what good positioning means is that it's a place where you can heal for a few seconds without being immediately pushed. But you should also have the advantage of being able to push and finish enemies if you have them cracked. That is truly the ideal for best positioning. It's a win-win in any situation. You can heal if you make a mistake and you can also finish if you win more of the bullet exchanges. Nevertheless, that is going to wrap up the video for today. Be sure to take all the tips into consideration the next time you're playing Apex. Thank you guys for spending a couple minutes of your day with me. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a like rating. It is always appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe and join the champion squad. We're on the road to 25,000 subscribers. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, this has been your boy Solomon D and I'm signing off. Peace.